hello and welcome to another trash youtube video in today's video we're going to be looking at some seam poetry questions on the poem solitude so before we get started if you have not watched my video where i analyze the poem solitude line by line word for word then i would definitely recommend that you give that a watch before you come back to this video to answer the question because obviously as a seam poetry exercise there is an expectation that you understand the poem itself that you've seen it before that you've studied it before and that you understand all the things we teach um, all the nuances the tone the diction the theme um, all those different things like that so please go ahead and watch that video come to this video once you've actually studied the poem and now you're working on answering your questions how to answer poetry questions your answering techniques and um, you know applying your knowledge of the poem solitude in your paper two exam so if we have a look over here this is sort of how your poem is going to come up in your exam so in your typical um, home language exam your first four, four questions in paper two are going to be poetry the first poem is going to be a poetry essay and then the, the other three options are going to be your um, questions and you just have to choose two out of the four so you can definitely go with which um, poems you prefer but you can also have a look at the questions that they have asked in those different um, in those different questions and decide which questions you feel are going to produce a stronger response for you in terms of the poetry essay for me personally i advise my students to avoid it and to rather work on and do a question based poem purely because it is 10 marks and to write an essay for 10 marks is quite challenging and you have to sort of have a structure you have to organize your thoughts whereas if you rather answer you know four questions which are typically in the format you know question um the first two questions being two marks the last two three marks there are variations sometimes you have a four marker sometimes you have a one marker um but this is sort of typically how it's asked and so i believe that this is your you have a greater chance of getting um 10 out of 10 for your poem in a contextual question um question rather than in a poetry essay so that's just my personal opinion that's my personal advice to you when it comes to answering poetry questions um there definitely is technique and skill in addition to your knowledge of the poem that is important so what we're going to sort of do in this little mini lesson is i'm going to have a read of these questions with you i'm going to discuss with you exactly what i'm looking for in the questions and the answers and then I'll instruct you to pause the video to try and answer these questions yourself. And then we're going to go through each of the questions and I'm going to show you a model answer. Obviously, your answers are not going to be exactly like my answers because we cannot think in the exact same way in the exact same words. But I'll show you exactly how I'm answering the question and how I am ensuring that my marker is going to give me full marks for each question, for each answer. So I'm not going to read our poem because you can read it yourself. What I do want to note, though, is that having the poem in front of you um, when you're writing the exam is so incredibly helpful. And I feel like some students don't take advantage of this. Um, it's not like, you know, when you're doing um, any other form of literature, you don't have the entire book with you, you don't have the entire novel or the entire play with you. You may have an extract, but here you literally have the entire poem. Obviously, you don't have all your helpful annotations. But what this allows you to do is it allows you to refer back to the text and you can be incredibly specific then in your answers. You can quote what the figures of speech are before you've explained them to keep yourself on track. And you can also notice little things. So for instance, I hope that as you watch my videos on the different poems, you notice actually some similarities. You've noticed how I've been analyzing the poems. You've noticed I say similar things whenever I encounter enjambment. You notice I say similar things whenever, whenever I encounter um, a metaphor. And so you can understand those patterns and then it becomes more of an exercise when you are, when you are faced with a sort of question in the exam, when you have your scene poem, that you have studied and you know your sort of main vocabulary and terminology and themes and messages of all your poems. But with the poem in front of you, you can also do a little bit of analysis in the exam itself, especially when the question maybe is posed in a way that you didn't really think of before. So just because it's a seen poetry question doesn't necessarily mean that you are going to know it. Maybe in your analysis, you missed the metaphor in line six or whatever it was. And now you have to analyze that metaphor. But because of your knowledge of the scene poem in general, you will be able to understand the impact of that metaphor. 
So essentially, if I'm boiling down my main point over here, is to use what they give you here. Use the text in your answers. Don't just ignore it and go based on what you remember. You must use what you remember, but you must apply to the text and show that application in your answer. They have given you the full poem for a reason, so use it. All right, so question one says, refer to the line, the echoes bound to the joyful sound. Explain the line in the context of the poem for two marks. So what I want you to think of whenever you have a two mark question is think about what two different ideas must I bring in order to get my two marks for my answer. So what I always like to do is I always like to take a pen or a highlighter or a pencil and circle the two places or the two keywords in the question that are gonna give me that, those two marks. So if I have a look at this question, I can see I need to firstly explain the line and then secondly, I need to explain the context of the poem. I won't give too much else away, but I'll explain it more when we go through the memo. Refer to the line, there are none to decline your nectared wine. Explain what the nectared wine represents. So for two marks, yeah, I need to unpack nectared wine in the context of this poem, and then I need to explain what it represents. Question three, comment on the effectiveness of the use of juxtaposition in this poem. This is a three mark question, and it seems to be pretty vague, right? There's not a very big specific line. It can come across as a little bit shocking or a little bit scary. It's three marks, I don't really know what to talk about. Well, let's go back a step. Firstly, I'm going to have to circle the word juxtaposition. I'm going to have to show that I know what this word means and I have to give an example of it. Then I have a look at the word effectiveness. I'm gonna to have to say why this juxtaposition is effective. In order to explain why something is effective, what you usually find in poetry is that effectiveness is linked to emphasis. So the reason why poets use certain figures of speech and poetic devices is to emphasize a certain message or to enhance their tone or enhance their theme or what they're trying to relate, their intention. So for this question, I'm gonna dedicate one, dedicate one sentence to explain the juxtaposition, one to maybe the message or the context of the poem, and then thirdly, I'm gonna link it all together, show how it's effective in emphasizing a certain aspect of the poem. Question four, critically discuss the irony which is embedded in the poem's meaning. Three marks once again. So here we're dealing with the whole poem. So you can see we have to, for a mark, tell me what the entire poem's meaning is. We then need to explain irony and we need to make it sure, we need to explain the irony in the poem, but we need to ensure that our analysis of what irony is, is very clear to the mark, it's to make it, makes it very clear to the marker that we know what irony is. And then we need to have a critical discussion for the third mark. So I hope that you're gonna pause this video now, answer the questions to the best of your ability, and then press resume and we can go through some marking guidelines. All right, so I hope you're back with me now. I hope you've answered your questions and you are ready to, ready to go about marking. So as I said, these are model answers. No one's ever gonna get the same answer in English. That's the beauty of English. Um, it's all about your justification. Um, so when you read these answers, just keep in mind the fact that if you have some variation in your, in your answer, then that's totally fine. Often these questions, English questions are open-ended because they allow for different students to interpret things in different ways. What I want you to work on is where I am putting the marks, where I'm assigning myself marks for each of my answers so that you can see whether your work deserves that mark or not. Question one, refer to the line, the echoes bound to the joyful sound, explain the line in the context of the poem. The poem is about how people will always share in your happiness, but that when you experience grief, you experience it in solitude. An echo is a reverberation of sound, so the line shows how your joy will be reflected onto many people. The internal rhyme of bound and sound emphasize the joyful and song-like sounds being reflected. So in this answer, what I've put in brackets is sort of extra going above and beyond to explain the line more deeply. But you can see the first line, I've explained what the context of the poem is. What is the poem about? And in the second sentence, I've explained this particular line that an echo is a reverberation and what it signifies. If I wanted to go above and beyond, um, it is only two marks, so I didn't really have to, but then I analyzed the line even further on a sort of poetic device level. And I found that there was internal rhyme in this poem, which I remembered from class and I wanted to include that in there. 
So give yourself a mark if you've explained the context of the poem, and then if you've explained the line and what the meaning of the line is. Question two, refer to the line, there are none to decline your nectared wine. Explain what the nectared wine represents. So over here, I'm gonna first explain what nectared wine is, and then I'm gonna ex explain what it represents. Nectared wine is a metaphor for joyous feelings or positivity. The speaker relates how no one will turn away from you when you are experiencing happiness. They will partake in your joy. As you can see, a two mark question, pretty simple to answer. Question three, comment on the effectiveness of the use of juxtaposition in this poem. So now we get a bit more challenging, we get to our three mark answers. The juxtaposition of sing and sigh contrasts the feelings of joy and grief and the different reactions the world has to these emotions. When you are happy, people join in your celebration, but when you are upset, people do not partake in your emotion. The use of these contrasts throughout the poem emphasizes the message of self-reliance and the reality that grief is an emotion dealt with in solitude. So how are the marks assigned here or how you can think of it in your head in terms of answering all aspects of the question? As you can see the first line, I've explained the juxtaposition. And in my explanation, I've quoted from the poem. So I've used the poem to guide me, especially because this question did not say refer to any particular line. It just said refer to the poem. And so I want to show the marker exactly what I'm referring to in the poem, which part I'm referring to. So no, I'm not going to copy out the whole poem, but I'm going to quote these two words to show the contrast between them, sing and sigh. I also use the word contrast in this sentence because I want to show the marker I understand what juxtaposition is. So I've explained what the juxtaposition is, then I've gone ahead and explained the context or the message of the poem, that when you are happy people join your celebration, but when you're upset people do not partake. And then lastly I've explained the effectiveness, the third mark. So I've said how the use of these contrasts emphasize the message of the poem, and I've added in there some nice vocabulary that I, vocabulary that I learned when I studied the poem, when if you look at my previous video on the, on the poem, I've analyzed some themes. So I've used some of the vocabulary in this answer. And I've said the message or the theme of the poem is self-reliance and that grief is an emotion dealt with in solitude. And then I'm gonna award myself three out of three. Question four, critically discuss the irony which is embedded in the poem's meaning, three marks. The poem is about how happiness is shared, whereas grief is experienced in isolation. The speaker expresses how when we die, we file through one by one, showing how death and grief are solitary journeys. However, the fact that we must all experience life in this way highlights the irony of the poem as the experience of solitude is universal and therefore a unifying commonality. So in this question, the last question is always a little bit of a thinker. It always refers to something very um, like, you know, philosophical perhaps about the poem. And so here we talk about the irony in the poem's meaning. So I've started off by explaining what the poem is actually all about, what the poem's meaning is. That was my first sentence, that's my first mark. Then I've gone on to explain more about the poem's meaning, but I've used some specific examples to showcase the irony. I haven't explained the irony yet in that second sentence, but then I've explained it in the third one once I've given a particular example from the poem. So remember that because you have the poem in front of you, it is an expectation that you provide specific reference and specific examples from the poem in your answer. And then in the third sentence, I've explained the irony and the irony is the opposite of what is expected. And so here we can see that it's opposite of what we expect. The poem's all about solitude, about being you know, having this individual experience. And yet, because we all have to go through life in solitude or go through the process of death in solitude, we are unified by that. I hope that you found this video helpful in your study of poetry and study of answering techniques. Um, I will continue to do them if you guys enjoyed this poem. Um, so if you enjoyed this video, please let me know by giving um, the video a thumbs up and by subscribing to the channel. And I'll see you in the next video.